In this video, let's talk about who were the rulers of Harappan cities. So, who ruled Harappan cities? Well, the answer would be we do not know. Yes, we do not know who ruled Harappan cities. However, it is possible that Harappan cities had one of the below types of administration. It could have been a monarchy. Monarchy means there is a single ruler. For example, like a king or a queen. Or it could have been an oligarchy. Oligarchy means there could have been multiple rulers. Please remember these terms. They are very important. Not only here, but also in polity, economy and other terms also. For example, you must have heard of the terms monopoly and oligopoly. These terms are mostly used in economy. For example, if there is a company which is totally dominating the entire market for a particular product, then we say that that company has monopoly over that market. Similarly, if two or more companies are having complete control over the market for some product, then we can say that the company is having an oligopoly. You use monopoly very regularly in your day-to-day -day language. But let me give you an example of oligopoly which you rarely use. For example, think of a car market. In case of India, you only have selected car manufacturers which are actually controlling almost the entire market. If you start listing all the car manufacturers in India, then you can count them on your fingers. So that is why we can say that these car manufacturing companies are playing an oligopoly in the Indian car market. Anyway, this is all related to economy. So please try to relate the words mono and oligo here. Archi is basically rule. So monarchy means that rule by a single person. Archi is rule. Oligo means many. So oligarchy simply means rule by many people. It is also possible that Harappan cities were actually ruled by a number of traders. So such kind of rulers would be called as oligarchic commercial republics. I hope you know and understand the meaning of the word republic from your polity syllabus. So any of these three type of systems could have been the possible authority that were ruling Harappan cities. And at the same time, it is probable that priests were not the rulers. We already discussed this in our religion chapter of Indus civilization. Priests were probably not the rulers because we did not find any evidences of temples and monuments to gods in the Harappan cities. These kind of monuments and temples were actually there in ancient Egypt. And evidently, ancient Egypt was ruled by a priest king. But Harappan cities were not ruled by priest kings. So we can say that priests were not the rulers in Harappan cities. One of these three was probably the administrative system in the Harappan cities. Now the question is, how do we know that there was some administration and authority in Harappan cities? Why not anarchy? Anarchy means no ruler. So how can we say that Harappans did not have anarchy? That means Harappans did not have any ruler. We can say that Harappans did not have anarchy because of certain features in the Harappan culture. And all these features which are shown here were not possible without some solid authority and administration. That is why we can say that there was some kind of authority and administration in Harappan cities and this authority and administration basically maintained all these important features of Harappan cities. And these features are nothing but planned cities, house building, selection of location for settlements, uniformity and standardization of artifacts, religious aspects and finally the conservatism of Harappan people or Indus civilization people. Now let's discuss these aspects one by one and we will relate these aspects to authority and administration in Harappan cities. Please note that we have already studied all this data in our previous lectures. What we are doing now is basically we are relating the feature with the importance of authority and administration. So we won't go into the details of all these because we have already studied all these. If you did not watch that video, you can click on this link here to watch it. So the first aspect in planned cities is we know that there were public buildings like Great Bath and Granary. Public buildings means that they can be used by all people. So if there is any building which is basically a public building and all people can use it, it means that people came together and they had some kind of authority and administration so that these places can be built. Moreover, in all the Harappan cities, houses were not built first. Initially, the platforms, roads, and the drains were built in cities. And after building platforms, roads and drains, 
people started to build their houses. This means that somebody planned the city and they built platforms, roads and drains and only after that individual people came and built their own houses. That is why authority and administration existed in Harappan cities. Moreover, there was proper drainage system. This proper drainage system was elaborately designed and elaborately built. This again means that there was elaborate planning by authorities. Moreover, there were also lamp posts at regular intervals on the city streets. This again indicates that individual people were not building lamp posts but some kind of government was doing it. Other aspects are burnt bricks of good quality and standard size were same in all the cities. For example, bricks had same ratio of dimensions that is 4 is to 2 is to 1 ratio. Moreover, the size of bricks was also uniform. There were two sizes of bricks. One size was 40 cm by 20 cm by 10 cm which is nothing but 4 is to 2 is to 1 ratio and the other size of the brick was 28 cm by 14 cm by 7 cm. Again, this is also 4 is to 2 is to 1 ratio. So, all these cities made only these two kind of bricks. This again shows that there was high degree of standardization or high uniformity which was basically maintained by some kind of authority. Moreover, the citadel as well as the lower town were separated by boundary walls. And sometimes there were also fortifications which were either made of brick or of stone. This means that ordinary and individual people were not building the stone wall. But the government of Harappan cities was building these stone walls. And the last and the most important evidence is that we have found large scale constructions like reservoirs, canals for irrigation and dockyard. Obviously, these things cannot be built by private entities or individual entities. This means that the government has planned the construction as well as it mobilized labor as well as resources for this construction. So, planning of the cities basically indicates that there was an administration or government in Harappan cities. This video is mainly important from the point of view of mains exam. The second element is house building. House plan was very uniform which means that all the houses had a central square courtyard like this and around this courtyard there were many rooms. So this was basically the common plan of all the houses in Harappan cities. This again means that there was a body or there was a government which was regulating the house building. Moreover, Harappans as a whole considered aspects of hygiene to be very important in their life. For example, we know that each house had its own bathroom and most of the houses also had their wells. All the cities as well as smaller settlements also had elaborate drainage system. All this indicate that there was an administration which was taking care of all these by monitoring as well as maintaining them. Because once you build a drainage system, the work is not over. You have to regularly maintain it also. And this job was being done by some kind of government. Moreover, there was some kind of political and economic stratification within the Harappan society. Political stratification means there were rulers and there were other people who were not rulers. Economic stratification means there were rich people and there were other people who were not rich, that is mainly poor laborers. And all these three types of peoples had houses of different sizes. And such kind of system continued for hundreds of years. This means that such kind of political and economic stratification was stably maintained by some kind of administration in Harappan cities. And the third element is the location of settlements. Harappans tried to settle at places where there were required raw materials. For example, Lothal is famous for bead industry because it is located close to the sources of carnelian. Carnelian is basically a brownish red color stone that is used in making stone beads. Similarly, Nageshwar and Balakot are coastal sites of Indus civilization. These coastal sites made shell items as well as bangles. Similarly, other coastal settlements in Gujarat were also famous for shell making. Kali Bangan had resources to make bangles. That is why they were making terracotta bangles. So the choice of settlements were also carefully selected by some kind of authority, administration or government. The another element is that there was high standardization or high unity in artifacts. For example, we know that all the Harappan cities made same two kinds of pottery that is plain pottery and red and black painted pottery. They also had similar kind of seals which were mainly made from steatite.
Moreover, the weight system is also uniform in all the Harappan cities. We have also learnt in our previous lectures that Harappan weight system was also being used in Dilman. What was Dilman? Dilman was basically the present day Bahrain island. We have just seen that brick sizes were also very uniform in all the Harappan cities. Again, all these show that there was some kind of authority which maintained and regulated all these aspects. Another very important factor or very important element is that Harappan script did not show any variations throughout its history. Because if you consider any modern day script, they kept changing regularly. For example, the Telugu, Tamil, Kannada, Malayalam, Hindi or any other languages were not the same let's say some hundreds of years ago. Slowly the scripts have changed. But the Harappan script did not show any kind of changes throughout their history. This again shows that there was some authority which maintained and regulated this script usage. Another aspect is that religion. We have found numerous numbers of mother goddess figurines from many Harappan cities. And all these mother goddess figurines were basically uniform in their features. They had a headdress, they were wearing similar kind of jewelry, the body features of the mother goddess figurine were also same. So all these aspects indicate that the Harappan cities had common religious institutions which were basically administered and maintained by some kind of government. The last and the most important feature which is not written in most books is none other than the conservatism of Harappan civilization people. I believe this topic is given in A.L. Bhashtam book, The Wonder That Was India. If you want to know further, you can just refer this book. So basically, along the Indus river, the major site is Mohenjadaro. So Mohenjadaro is located on the banks of river Indus in Pakistan. In Mohenjadaro, during excavations, we have found 9 strata of buildings. 9 strata of buildings means 9 layers in which different buildings were there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 like this. So upon digging or upon excavating, we have found different layers in which buildings were there. If we talk about the geography of Mohenjadaro, Mohenjadaro is basically located on the flood plains of Indus. That is why during monsoons, it used to flood regularly because river Indus is prone to flooding in its flood plains. So because of this flooding, buildings used to get damaged. Once the flood waters receded, Harappan people started to build new buildings again in the same locations. For example, if someone lost their house in the floods, then after the flood water receded, the person came back and he started to build again same building at the same location. The plan of the building was also same. So the buildings were reconstructed almost exactly like before. This shows that Harappans did not want to change. And such kind of behavior is basically called as a conservative nature or conservatism. Moreover, we know that Harappans had contacts with Mesopotamia. In certain aspects of culture, Mesopotamian people were actually far advanced compared to Indus civilization people. One of such material elements of culture where Mesopotamia was far advanced compared to Harappan civilization was in their weapons. We have learnt that Mesopotamian bronze and copper weapons were actually far superior compared to Indus civilization weapons. So even after having contacts with Mesopotamians, Harappans did not try to adopt this superior technology of weapons. This again shows the conservative nature of Harappan people. Another example is that we have just talked about Harappan script. Harappan script practically remained unchanged throughout their history. This means that they did not want things to change easily. There was some kind of authority, administration or government which was basically maintaining the stability in the Harappan society. So all these aspects basically show us that there was a government in Harappan cities. And what was that government? We do not know. It could probably a monarchy where a single person was ruling the Harappan city. Or it could have been an oligarchy where a group of persons were ruling. Or it could have been traders who were ruling the Harappan cities. Because in Harappan city, the main occupation or the main contribution to the economy came from trade. But we also know that most probably it was not the priests who were ruling the Harappan cities because we did not find any evidence of temples or monuments to gods. So this could be a main question like elaborate on the elements of culture that indicate there was a government in Harappan cities. Answer in 250 words. 
so you can easily make 250 words out of this video. If you like this video, please subscribe. You can download this presentation from our Telegram channel. The name of the channel is IAS Project. You can find the link for this channel in the description section below. Thank you.